Well, Graeme, thanks for joining us after what I imagine has been an extremely busy couple of days. It's been confirmed that you'll be taking the team for Saturday's game at Crystal Palace and, and possibly beyond that as well. For a boy of Newcastle fan, I guess it must be a very exciting time, but also maybe one tinge of sadness. Yeah, I mean, first thoughts, Dan, is sadness because I had, a, I had an excellent working relationship with the gaffer. Um, but we all know football, we know how it is. Uh, we, all, we all come into it knowing the rules. And uh, that's where my uh, initial emotions were. Since then, it's very professional. I've got a job to do. Obviously, I'm representing um, the staff and the players, um, trying to help the best I can in, in terms of preparing the team to, to go and get uh, a win at Crystal Palace. It is an interim appointment, but you're a Newcastle fan. What will it mean to you to be in the dugout at Selhurst Park on, on Saturday? Um, <laughs> I think the professional side of me hasn't allowed me to go. I haven't allowed myself to go there emotionally because you can't. I think if you think about last Sunday, you think about how big an occasion it was. That the players didn't go there emotionally, although we didn't get the result and the performance that we wanted. So I think that's the first thing. I think um, at some point in my life I look back and uh, you know I've, I've 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 done some things in my career I'm really proud of. Dan, uh, I've been to a Euros final. I've got a bronze medal in a World Cup. I've won an FA Cup. But for me, nothing's bigger than than being manager of Newcastle United. Nothing, nothing comes close. Um, everybody knows I first went to the St James's Park when I was four year old with my father. I seen Malcolm McDonald, I was a supporter in the Gallagher through the Keegan playing days and I've been a supporter through the Keegan management days and I was uh, blessed the fact that I was allowed to come back in January and I've, since then I've done nothing but give everything I can for the, for the football club. You mentioned there that it was Steve that brought you to the club and you're thankful for that. What has it been like at the training grounds? What's the preparation been like since, since he did depart? Well, again, um, you know, tinged with sadness and, and, and disappointment. The gaffer had been here two and a quarter years, so you get used to somebody. He's got a big personality. Uh, from a personal point of view, I enjoyed working with him. But in football, you have to move on. Players move on quickly. and It's about Crystal Palace. It's about preparing the team the best we can. Uh, in, order go, or in order to go down to Selhurst Park and be uh, competitive and uh, looking to try and get the first win of the season. Is there a temptation to change very much or is it about little tweaks here and there? Um, the way I am, Dan, I'll, I'll be assessing everything. I don't want to dive in early. I've got an idea where I want to work from, but I won't be naming the team till Saturday. I want to, we we'll trained yesterday, we've trained today, we've got an important training session tomorrow, taking as much information as we possibly can and then I'll make that decision um, Friday night and Saturday morning and uh, name the team just before the game. But I can assure you everybody will have had the same experience. Tactically, 20 players will know what the job's a, job is if they're called upon. The players were told on Wednesday morning uh, about the news, I imagine yourself too. How much has it helped to have that bit of clarity that everybody knows what they're working towards for, for Saturday? Well, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, obviously I've... Uh, Spoke to the owners on Wednesday morning. They made it uh, quite clear my role going forward, which is always nice to know. I think, um, I think sometimes that can settle the boys down. There's obviously been a lot of uncertainty since the owners uh, took over. Um, but I met Amanda, I met my dad on on Wednesday, and I think um, they addressed the players. I spoke to them after they left, and I think we've got a clear direction, uh, certainly in the short term for. For the way ahead. Obviously you've been very heavily involved with, with everything over the last few months anyway. Sometimes you've been in the dugout, sometimes you've been in the stands. On Saturday very much in the call face. I guess that'll bring with it a bit of extra scrutiny but with your work with England, with Belgium, with Everton, with Wigan, I guess you're kind of used to that. Yeah, I mean, Dan, I've been, I've been involved, been lucky enough to be involved in some you know, some real high profile games so that doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, as I've said, I'm, I'm ready for it. Um, if I had, in an ideal world, I'd sit and watch the game for 90 minutes from the stand because, uh, particularly in Newcastle, you've got a bird's eye view, you can see everything that's going on. You can rewind anything um, that's happening with the analyst. And 
my role at that point was just to help the gaffer as much as I could tactically. But obviously, my rules change. You need to influence the lads. You need to get the extra five percent out of them. So uh, on Saturday, I'll be in that technical area trying to get behind them and help them to, to get that first win. Also getting behind them and helping them, hopefully 2,800 travelling fans as well. Does that sense of occasion make you look forward to it even more? Yeah, because I'm one of them. So it's, it's 2,801. I think, look, Dan, I know what the Geordies stand for because I'm one of them. We all get brought up, or the majority get brought up in this area to be hard working, to be honest and to fight. I think if we have them three qualities on Saturday, we'll come close to getting a result. And um, without the tactical side of the game, certainly from a mentality point of view, that's what we're looking for.